Hi everybody, Martin the Flicking Feathers are here. Um, continue with the Beginner's Fly Tying series today. Um, starting to get a bit more sort of adventurous with maybe some of these. Um, and this is a transition midge. It's a really good uh, chrominid imitation. Great uh, buzzer as we call them in Britain. Um, really effective, uh, especially early in the season, um, over muddy bottoms. Uh, it's, it's basically sort of supposed to imitate a midge that's transitioning from the bloodworm or larval stage into the midge pupa. So, oh, bumping the hook, bumping this camera there. Sorry about that. I've got a TMCO 2487 heavy grub hook, but the camera's on B100, B110, something like that would be fine. And I've painted the back third red with uh, some red nail polish. So, I'm just going to start some black thread. I see 10 op viewers. Um, and I'm just going to run a short section, only three or four turns on the, the hook there. And then I'm going to take some olive or brown is a good colour as well. Uh, or you could tie them even paler, a, 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 a yellow green chartreuse is quite nice as well. And just going to take some uh, flex floss, span flex, uni stretch, so much the same stuff. Just catch it and just leave this waist tag just now. So I'll take three, that's four wraps, five wraps, and that's got to be the entire length of the head. Right, that's it, that black. I don't want my head being any longer than that. And then I'm just going to start wrapping this down under reasonable amount of attention, keeping it nice and flat. Sorry, I keep bumping my camera. Get a bit close just to pick up the detail. And go all the way around the bend. You can see that you can actually see the red shining through the span flex. It sort of gives you that transition. And then you get to the, the bottom, you can slacken the pressure and start to come back up. You want these, you don't want too much tension in your floss here. And your span flex, just let that run round. Gives you a nice ribbed effect, nice segmentation. And you can sort of adjust the tension to suit yourself. How big do you want the rib? Get it all the way back up to the eye, up to the head, and then I tighten up as I go over the black thread here a couple of turns. And then I'll come across my thread, a couple of turns will hold it, just keep the tension in the thread at all times, and wrap back to the edge of the black there. Stretch the floss, trim it, and then that's it, that'll never, I mean that's never moving. But always make sure you've it well tied down before if you stretch it it'll ping back so you need to be careful. If you stretch it too much and you don't have enough thread over it to hold it, it will unravel and you'll have to start it again. For the wing buds, I'm just using some uh goose bait. I've got here uh just 
Yeah, I died sunburst. But the actual, the, the, the beat itself is quite pale. Uh, but it's quite nice. So, I line them up. First of all. Two, one for each side. And just, uh, I'll trim them at, a, at an angle. Right, I don't, I don't want the, the very fine edges. And I'll just split them in my nail and off of them over the hook. Now you can see I like to go back. I've got like three turns a rib. Just take a loose turn or two just to get them in there. And I like, I like to just take a wee wee second just to position them as I like them. Angle them down slightly and tighten up. Right, that one on the opposite side's fighting me a wee bit there. But you can just make it go how you like, just twist it. You've got and then run the thread all the way to the, f the eye. Keep tension in your thread, right? Pull it tight with a bobbin. And then you can just rip these away. It gives you a nice, clean break. And all you've got to do is sort of build up a smallish head. And you don't want it too big. But you would still want a, this sort of a reasonably pronounced thoracic area. And then... Got to come in and uh, work finish. And again, you can use your work finish to help you build the shape of the of the head as you place the wraps. Yeah, nice and tight. And then all that's left to do is give it a good coat of head cement. And I like to use the head cement because it's, I mean, well, it's just nail polish. Um, and it sort of, it seems to lift the colour of the, the red through the span flex a wee bit. Make sure it's well covered. Sorry, that's just taking that out of your view. I'm just just making sure it's well thoroughly coated with varnish. And I only really give these one coat. They usually don't need two. Just give them a heavy coat. Um, you can see that it's starting to sag, I'll, I'll take that out and stick it in the wheel. Um, or I could just invert the, the hook in the vise for the time it takes. But once that, I mean the, 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 the varnish shrinks anyway as, it's, as it sets. And you end up with a nice, a really nice chrominid pattern. So, I hope you liked that, I hope it was useful. Uh, tie some of these up. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty easy pattern. Um, you know, you, you, when you get into the rhythm of tying them, you can tie tie them in two minutes. You know, they're, they're, once you get the, the hook varnished, they're really they're really effective. Um, I'd encourage you to stick some in your box, go and catch some fish on them. So, thanks for watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up below if you liked it. And uh, remember to subscribe for more HD videos. Thanks very much. Bye.